Hey guys, Bill Nichols here. I am uh, doing a quick unboxing today. Initial thoughts on the Kodak SP360 Pro Pack. So a week or two ago, I did a, a review, an unboxing, a review in a drive-through Monument Valley with a Ricoh Theta S. Great little camera, looks like a little remote control. It has two 1080p cameras on it, and it puts those together in post-production in a video, I mean, in a editing software where it turns it into a 360 video. You can then edit it in, in Premiere. It's a little wonky because it's this weird view where you have the middle, then the two edges are out here. But you can do some quick editing, you know, grade the color, uh, replace audio, that kind of thing, and then inject some metadata into it, bring it into YouTube. I'll do a whole video on how you do that later. But uh, the picture on it was okay, but it wasn't great. And it's 1080p spread across this huge spherical 360 image. So I wanted to get something that was a bit better. So I picked up a Kodak SP PixPro 360 dual 4K. So this has two 4K cameras that I think are gonna be back to back, kind of like the Ricoh Theta S. And it's going to uh, be mounted on something, either a suction cup on the car, maybe the handlebars of my mountain bike or something, and we'll take it out for a spin, see how it looks. So let's go into the top-down studio. Let's do a quick unboxing, come back, I'll give you some initial thoughts, show you it on a basic setup, and uh, anything that I might you know, notice right off the bat. This is the Pro Kit. So it comes with uh, the camera box, and it comes with an accessory box by Kodak, the PixPro SP360 4K. Let's take a look, let's open it up. Nice packaging. You can see the two cameras right here. They're going to be much bigger than the Ricoh. And let's get rid of that box. Open it up, you have your congratulations on purchasing. <laughs> That's always funny to me. Your SP360 camera kit, little lens cloth, I guess. Looks like a charger, a couple of batteries, a wall plug. And here is the actual camera itself. So they're actually really nice, pretty, uh, pretty hefty. They're supposed to be splash proof, they say. A little trap door here for the battery. LCD screen says NFC, so it looks like it's got some wireless connectivity, probably back to your phone. Your Wi-Fi button, record button, power and mode, and another selector. So you're probably going through the menus by pressing up and down here, and then on the record to select or enter, maybe the Wi-Fi to go back in the menu. Big dome lens. So you get two of these in the package. Let's open this little guy up. It's not a nice little carry bag. USB micro cable. Looks like a glass dome. Let's, look. Let's open these little guys up. All right, looks like a lens protector or a lens cover. Maybe this is uh, when you're going underwater. We'll take a look at the instructions later. Or just an overall lens protector, probably, since those lenses are just exposed. Let's go ahead and zip this guy back up. So initial impression, uh, it looks well built. They are solid. Um, they're, they're all plastic. They've got some little metal you know, Allen screws here. Here's your HDMI, so micro HDMI, so you could monitor live, I guess, if you have it, it looks like a microphone on the bottom, and then your SD card slot. Now, unlike, well, I won't say unlike, the Ricoh Theta came with internal memory. This you're gonna add a card into, so you're gonna need two cards. It does not come with a card. I think that these are gonna go back to back like this when you wanna do 360 in 4K. So let's set these to the side. We'll get rid of this box over here. Let's bring out the accessory box. So one thing, I'm still trying to find some good uses for 360 video. All right, so here's the accessory box. I, like I said, I am still trying to find some uses for this. Somebody had said, oh, that'd be great driving through a city like New York. So I do live close to downtown LA. So I think I'll go up to downtown LA, maybe drive around, show some of the architecture around there. All right, we've got, looks like a mount here. Let's get a little more contrasty here. This looks like these probably 
There's a tripod mount on the bottom. There's a quarter 20, 20 screw here. Yeah, so it looks like these will go in like this back to back with this frame over the top. Now I've got to screw them in. And then um, it's got a mount on the bottom like a GoPro. Actually looks like it's probably a GoPro compatible mount. Same kind of thumb screw here. All right, so that's cool. It's a little uh, frame to line them up. Pull that back. Suction cup, flat surface. Suction cup down. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. There you go. Some other little clip. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe a wire holder. Uh, um, some kind of a wrench for something. Like I said, I haven't looked at the instructions. I'm just unboxing this. This is a remote. So I have read about the remote. The remote, you can sync up the cameras and hit record. So if I have this on top of the car and I don't want to continuously record, I could hit this supposedly to start and stop recording, power them off and on. And it looks like uh, going between a couple of different modes and going between still picture and video. It's got a wrist strap. Looks like this is just a single mount for just one. All right, so this is going to mount on here like this. So it just kind of looks like a selfie stick. Doesn't look like it has any smart functions. So you're gonna start the camera either with your wrist strap or directly on the cameras. Does this extend? Oh, this does extend, wow. Okay, so there's the extension. So you can walk around with it like this. It actually extends, looks, you know, decently far, maybe two feet. Put that back. So I have a little bit more hopes for this than I did with the Ricoh. The Ricoh was cool, it was very easy. Um, just not the highest definition when you have 1080p and you're trying to go all the way surround. So this should be at least four times the resolution. I know that the actual recorded image isn't 4K because I believe you get the circular fisheye. It's using a whole 4K sensor, but it's using a circle in that sensor. So it's not doing any pixel binning. It's using all of the pixels within that circle, but the circle is 2880 by 2880. So you're losing, you know, you're not getting either 3840 by whatever it is, uh, 2160 or 4,000, whatever by, you know, 2160, you're getting 2880 by 2880 on both images. And then it's going to bring those together. So it looks good overall, uh, for the first initial thoughts on it and take it out and see what uh, we can get with it. All right. So that was the unboxing, uh, you know, nice packaging overall. It, uh, it looks good. I've seen a few sample videos on YouTube. I think they look a lot better than the Ricoh Theta S. I will say for portability, ease of use, the Ricoh Theta might be a little bit easier. It has built-in memory. The Kodak SP360 doesn't, so you're adding your own cards. Luckily, cards are cheap. But I took it out, I set it up, and here it is, the initial look of it. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool, back-to-back. -back. Uh, cameras are a lot heftier. These are the uh, dome protectors that I showed in the unboxing. So we'll definitely be using these. Looks like they have um, maybe potential filters or something that'll be coming out. But these are just basically plastic filters. I mean, plastic uh, lens protectors that are gonna go over, especially if I'm gonna take this out mountain biking or on my car or something like that. I wanna have the lens protected. There's a good chance I might fall you know, or something else will happen. It's a great little suction cup mount. It's got a uh, little rotary friction dial here so that you can adjust this however you want, lock it in place and then, um, you know, tighten this thumb down, this screw here. And usually just as a tip, I will tighten these down with a, I'll get them thumb tight, but then they usually still move. So I'll actually tighten them down with the screwdriver with this, with the screw that's inside. You then need the screwdriver to back it back off, but that's a whole nother story. Good uh, suction cup, lots of buttons here. So really quickly what I did was I, I took them out, replaced the, the little lens ring with this lens cover turn them on immediately it has you set the date so i set them both to the same date and time they're probably going to be off on time in a little bit and then uh inserted the batteries inserted a card put them into this frame now one drawback is once they're in this frame if you want to sync them if you want to recharge them if you want to take the memory card out you've got to disassemble this so it's about a five minute process not a big deal total to take it all apart get everything out put it back in 
but uh, it would be a little bit nicer if they had maybe made the ports with a rubber cover on this side so you could get a USB to, to charge, you could get at, um, you know, so that you could charge the battery, you could get at your card and whatever else you needed. Instead, it's all on the back or on the bottom, and this is completely covered, as you can see. So you don't have any access to the ports or anything. Kind of a miss in the design on my part, on my thought. But uh, overall, they do look much more robust. They're a lot larger than the Rico. The, the sensor looks like it's probably larger. I don't know, I'll try and look that up. But I'm gonna figure out where I wanna take these. And my initial thought is that I'm gonna mount this. I have some RAM mounts. So I think I'm gonna mount this on the handlebar of my mountain bike, which means half the time you're gonna be looking at me and kind of what's around me, but then you'll see what's in front. I would wear it on my head, but this is actually, like this is decently heavy, so I'm not gonna be doing that. I think I'll take it out of my mountain bike, uh, go for a short mountain bike ride, maybe just a little downhill action, see how that looks. You can come along, take a look as well. And uh, yeah, so my initial thoughts, it's pretty, you know, it's, they look like they're built pretty well. They look nice. Uh, I'm just really interested to see the camera quality. So if you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, take a look, uh, let me know, comment down below, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't. You know, let's take this thing out and take a look. So have an awesome day. Thanks for watching this video. Talk to you soon. Hey guys, last day of June. Bill Nichols here, back from my road trip. Let's build a drone. So previously I did the unboxing of the X-Craft X Plus One.